Good morning and welcome to Rising. We have a fiery show today. Fire is on my mind because I survived one yesterday <laughs> at my other place of employment. It was actually not, no one was harmed and nothing was damaged, but a dumpster caught fire and it's kind of under the building. So the building did like fill with smoke and it was, it was wild, but Robbie, perfectly I'm surprised fun. you even reacted to it. I thought there were dumpster fires at Reason Magazine <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of jokes about, our oh, libertarians even going to call the fire department? What about the private fire department, et cetera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think these are all very, very funny. So. All right, I'm glad you have a good humor about it. In other less humorous news, uh, there's some interesting developments on the abortion front. Arizona is reaching back to the Civil War to enforce a law with dramatically negative implications for privacy and women's rights. The Arizona Supreme Court held on Tuesday that a 160-year-old near-total abortion ban is enforceable in the state. The ruling makes abortion a felony punishable by two to five years in prison for anyone who performs one or helps a woman obtain one. The law outlaws abortion from the moment of conception but includes one exception, when it is necessary to save a pregnant person's life. This ruling goes farther than the one passed right after the Dobbs ruling, which allowed termination of a pregnancy up to 15 weeks. Now, according to NBC News, the Arizona Supreme Court says it's going to put yesterday's decision on hold for 14 days. During this time, it will send the case back to a lower court so that the court could consider additional constitutional challenges. Abortion and access to abortion is becoming a political issue in this year's presidential election, with some crediting the Dems with winning the midterms in 2022 because voters voiced their opposition to the Dobbs decision. Remember that Dobbs came down in 2022 from a court that had turned quite conservative with former President Trump naming three of the justices, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, to the bench. Mm. Politico states that bans on all abortions with minimal exceptions are some of the most unpopular ideas in America. In the 2022 exit polls in Arizona, 62% of voters backed making abortion legal and 35% wanted it to be illegal. Only 5% supported a ban on abortion in all cases. Now it appears some politicians are backpedaling to curry favor with voters. Arizona Senate candidate Carrie Lake is now slamming the law she once called great. Now here she was two years ago. Obviously, I think Roe v. Wade should be overturned, and I think the Supreme Court, I have a good feeling that they're going to do the right thing this time. And, and again, what, I'll echo what Steve just said. We have a great law in the books right now if that happens. But yesterday she said, quote, I understand the fear and anxiety of pregnancy and the joy of motherhood. I oppose today's ruling. Former United States President Donald Trump has found himself on all sides of the abortion debate since 1999. Ahead of the 2000 election, Trump told Meet the Press that he is, quote, very pro-choice. But then by 2015, he called himself evolved on the issue. In 2016, he said, quote, we're not going to allow and we're not going to fund as long as you have the abortion going on at Planned Parenthood. Last year, Trump said nobody's ever done more for the right to life than Donald Trump. But on Monday, one day before the Arizona law was received, Trump said the abortion issue should be left to the states. All so, right. Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, so I don't know that there's necessarily flip-flopping going on with some of these figures. I don't know what exactly what law Carrie Lake was referencing there. If she's just saying, again, many people on the right have the standpoint that Roe v. Wade was a bad constitutional decision because it took, or because it, they believe it's protecting a right that is not explicitly in the Bill of Rights, and it prevents states from making their own abortion policies, and states should be able to do that, and different states are gonna make different choices. Now, Arizona, th this is a, is a law this, the, the, from the Civil War that um, goes well beyond what most people in Arizona or most people in the country want, so they're saying the state should get to decide, and Arizona, they've decided that Arizona should be 15 weeks, and that's that. So we do know what law, uh Carrie Lake was talking about. She was specifically talking about this law. Fuller quote, she, uh, she said, I'm incredibly thrilled that we're going to have a great law that's already on the books. I believe it's ARS 133603. She said that in a tw 2022 interview with uh, James T. Harris of the Conservative or Circus. Now, this same law, which still says the same thing that it did back then, which is uh, a total, near total ban on abortion. Uh, it is illegal after the moment of conception with the one narrow exception of saving the life of the mother um, is now something that she realizes, I guess, is politically unviable and well to the right of what most even really core conservative voters 
really want. So as Republicans have been going around the country saying, and, and as Trump said in his statement on Monday, we're leaving it up to the states, states' rights, we're leaving it up to the states. This is exactly what they have to now claim credit for. If you overturn Roe, if you overturn Casey, and you get yourself into a situation where states can decide what abortion rights are, you get this inevitability where you get a state like Arizona that reaches back to a Civil War era law to completely ban abortion for women in the states. I don't see how Donald Trump owns appointing the Supreme Court justices that overturned Roe and doesn't own this outcome. He doesn't own it because he doesn't support this law. And no one supports this law. And they're going to work to turn it back to what they decided was appropriate for the state, which is 15 weeks. So, I mean, like, no one is coming out of the woodwork to, to say that, yes, all abortions should be illegal from the get-go. So I, I don't know that it becomes Well, this issue. was a pretty predictable outcome, right? The point of the matter is that th laws like this, this one in particular, have been on the books not for years, not for decades, but for over a century and a half. And when someone goes around, along, comes along like Donald Trump, who wants to overturn your constitutional protection against state laws like these being passed, it is it, it, completely predictable that women in some of these states are going to be faced with the consequence of having zero right to abortion. That is precisely why people believe that you do have a constitutionally protected privacy right to be protected from whatever a, a, a given state, a given uh, set of legislators from 160 odd years ago might want to impose upon you. This is exactly why the kind of Bill of Rights style constitutional protections are in effect. But Donald Trump and the justice that he appointed decided that this was not the kind of right that needs to be protected for women in this country. And now the people of Arizona are living with the consequences. I, I suppose, again, they're, they're going to swiftly reset it to 15 weeks, which is not a radical um, uh, juncture at which to put some limits on whether you can get abortion. It is the same as what France has and many other European countries. It um, is in keeping with U.S. public opinion, which is that abortion should be absolutely available in many cases. It should be limited in some cases. Um, safe, legal, and rare was, in fact, Hillary Clinton's own standard from however many moons ago that actually seemed perfectly fine to me. And so if they overreach, they'll get punished for it. So even before, um, because of Donald Trump's Supreme Court uh, appointments, Arizona got itself into a place where it now has a near total ban on abortions. Joe Biden came out really capitalizing on what he, I think, was rightly perceived as broad public displeasure with the Republican stance on abortion. Uh, Donald Trump obviously came out Monday uh, trying to thread the needle, as it were, giving his position on the issue. And immediately thereafter, Joe Biden released some new ads that I think really get to the core of some of the public discomfort on this issue. Let's take a look at a piece of one of them right now. This is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. There's her little baby book. This is the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. Now all of these. Um, this is The blanket that she was in. And these are her little footprints. These are the kind of stories that I think are being shared, have been shared privately, as women have been concerned about the fallout from uh, the Dobbs decision. And it does seem very smart and, frankly, very impactful for the Democrats to be foregrounding those kinds of stories. There was a, another moment um, uh, a week or so ago where some of these Republican um, legislative efforts inadvertently caught up IVF uh, and the ability of women to access in vitro fertilization treatments, people who need additional help to become pregnant in the first place. And it caused a lot of backlash on the right because the idea of being a family first party is an obvious contradiction to the idea of impeding women's access to the kind of medical care that they need to actually get pregnant. And I think stories like the one Amanda showed in this ad, stories from women around the country who are dealing with the quote unquote unattended effects of the Dobbs decision um, are going to be very impactful and frankly might be the only saving grace for Democrats come fall. What do you make of this? Look, I, I think it's an effective ad and obviously a horrible situation and I would 
oppose policies that are trying to, if, if there's a policy to try to prevent someone in a medically compromised situation from getting the procedure or abortion or some other procedure that is necessary based on their health status, that's how I would vote, that's how I would think the law should be, and that's the case people have to make. I think Republicans, if there are Republicans arguing that that should be criminalized or that should be prevented, they're going to be on losing grounds. But again, most of the most of what I hear from Republicans is does in fact include exceptions for health of the mother, various exceptions. Um, you know, I, we got to get to a point of consensus, not in, in in the entire country, because we are going to decide this on a state by state issue. But I think a consensus absolutely allows for abortion in many circumstances, just not all circumstances. Yeah, speaking of which, the the state law I was referring to, it was the Alabama Supreme Court that held that frozen embryos created for the purpose of IVF should be considered children, um, which made it so that, you know, obviously you can't go about going through an IVF process if you think you're going to be thrown in jail because the eggs that you don't use uh, constitute murder. Um, so there was a lot of backlash, and Trump actually had to single out IVF in his remarks on Monday as something that he supported. So you're seeing a lot of tears, frankly, running through the Republican Party as people scramble for the messaging that will prevent them from losing a race that he's kind of primed to win over this kind of an issue. But concerns from, um, you know, pro, pro-choice pro flanks point out the fact that once Donald Trump is a second-term president, if he wins again, he is no longer as susceptible to the impact or the influence of public opinion, right? He's not trying to get reelected again. So if you see him as someone who is willing to basically change his opinion along with the political wins, as we've seen over the years, what does it mean when he's finally unshackled from those political wins, when he's been pushed to the left, basically, by public opinion on this issue? What happens when he's insulated from public opinion as the President of the United States? That, I think, is also a concerning possibility sure. for a lot of women. But I, should, but I should just point out, you know, look, for me personally, I'm pretty moderate on this issue and extremely reluctant to involve the government in basically any facet of people's life. I recognize that this is a difficult and complicated question because what conservatives see is a conflict of rights here between obviously the, it's, there's not some desire to just artificially or arbitrarily limit someone's health choices, but what conservatives see is that the, the baby, even pre-birth, should have should have rights, should have some recognition, maybe not at the very beginning when it's literally just a clump of cells, but by the end, what you have is a basically fully formed baby um, that can feel pain, that has a heartbeat, that resembles the baby that comes out of the woman at the end, and think well, that- of course, Robbie, but the issue isn't whether or not well, late-term abortions. That. We're talking about, Robbie, a ban on the moment of conception. So why no are you defending. pivoting this? No one is defending right. that. Right, but why are you pivoting this to 90s era late-term abortion fear-mongering? This is the end. Uh, those arguments have brought us here to a point where in Arizona, I'm why in some, by some in people Arizona, might want to limit a, abortions at 18 weeks. In, in Arizona, some cases. there is a ban on the day yeah. of conception. No one agrees with it. And in Alabama. Obviously, Carrie Lake did two seconds ago, and now she's pivoting, and now everyone is going to say, of course, they don't agree with it. But keep in mind, this law has been on the books since Abraham Lincoln was president. They knew it was on the books, and they intentionally overturned Roe v. Wade, which enabled these kinds of laws to now come back into effect. So if you were going to say you didn't know what was going to happen, you were either ignorant, stupid, or deeply naive, because this was always the ultimate outcome that, abortion, that pro-choice activists have been warning about for a very long time. All right, stick around. We have more Rising for you coming up next.